So we're back again with the, uh, the third video. This is Dennis Ponceau. I wanted to show you close up here that I've already started to remove the pencil that was here. I did that off camera just because I didn't want to take your time with it. But it's, it's throughout the drawing now. In some places I still left it, but I'm going to be aware that, you know, be careful not to get up against it and uh, be able to remove it. So by the end of the, the picture, you'll actually be able to see <clears throat> probably dark shadows where the uh, where the pencil was and uh, one second here just want to get the image back on the computer all right excellent now let's let's bring this picture in a little bit it's not quite that far just so it's like that I'll show you my sample here you can see the first color I used is the cobalt violet right here. Then I made the decision to add some mauve, Windsor, Windsor mauve into it to start to change it. This was my first application in there. Notice I drag it out to see how light it gets, it's sort of like what I do on the surface of the painting. I wanted it slightly bluer, so I continued to add more of that purple into it until I got it just about right. I'm not getting too terribly dark too soon. The other thing to keep in mind you don't see here, and I'm going to show it to you now, is when you overlap these colors, what happens when you put the colors on top of each other? Two colors make a third. So here on the cobalt violet, let's see, let's, let's bring that in a little bit so you can now bring this up. On the cobalt violet, you're going to see what that color looks like combined. That sort of tells me I'm in the right direction. All right, so on that note, let's get busy. Let's bring this down to right about there. This way I can cover most of the flower and you still can see Drink this drink, just, just a touch. I don't want to set top border that bothers me. There we go. Okay, not your check. Two brushes again. One for the water and one for the paint. I mixed a puddle of color up. I'll show you what a puddle looks like. You can see here, that's a puddle, right? You can't splash in it, but you certainly can take a lot of paint from it. It keeps me from going back and remixing the color over and over again. I think I'll start where I was before, initially, right here. Now I can come and clean that line up a little bit because I don't have pencil there. See how straight that line is now? I'll add some more color. Second brush. Pull the color up. At some point uh, in the next 10 minutes or so, I will turn and let you see the, the flower again. There we go. You want to clean your brush, your water brush that is, in between each application of paint. This way you bring a clean brush to your picture. Again, from the very edge. You can see my brush is wet, but it's not sopping wet. Clean. Right here. Just like before, bring it down a little further on one end instead of there. I think there'll probably be six or seven ten minute videos to something to that degree. Here too, where I was before. Here I have pencil, so I want to be cautious. Turning my brush so I can see the edge of the line. My line is here. If I paint it this way, I'm blinded. If I paint it this way, I can see it. 
I'm shaking the water off my brush, by the way. This is to allow just the right amount on the paper. You will find with practice, like a two brush system can really work. I do it all the time. This is the shadow area under the flower. It's quite remarkable what the second color does. And I would say most 90% uh, of the time, this is the process that I use when I paint the iris. I wanted to try to distill it down so that when I'm teaching it like I am now, I can work with very specific kinds of things instead of just generalities. I like to target the process a little bit so that it really becomes understood. I'm fortunate I have good tools. My brushes are they come to nice points. I use good color. By the way, this is Arsh's 140 pound paper. I didn't mention that, it's a cold press. Um, why did I choose this? Well, I wanted the, the painting to move along fairly quickly. And the thing with the, the 300 pound is sometimes it's a, it's a slower process because you can build so much more on the surface, you see? I'm going to come up to the edge here because there is a bit of a shadow in this part. And down here. So you have no pencil there, so I have no fear. But I'm going to use, I'm going to bring this line there. So I'm going, I'm not going to bring it all the way. You hear me cleaning my brush each time. And again, I don't worry about perfection here. I'm, I don't mind the sort of the way it blots up here a little bit. That's fine. See, becoming more finite, trying not to straighten out my curves. I have no pencil there. I can come right up to that edge. Here I have pencil. I'm going to come carefully there. And then up. You notice I turn my brush again. Pulling from this side and right from the edge again. It's good to repeat things. That's why you hear me do it. Because in my mind, I say these things. Let's continue a little bit. Every once in a while, when you have a puddle of color, you want to sort of stir it up a little bit because some pigments actually settle to the bottom. And since I've combined two colors, one pigment may be heavier than the other. That's why I do that. I'm gonna come in with my, oh, let's go to the seven brush here. I did that before and it worked out well. Get some paint on, here we go. Because it's much, it covers a bigger area much faster. I'm gonna reduce that white line a little bit. I still have some time to take care of that white line. Okay. I have color here as well. I'm right up to the corner, right up to the edge. Load my brush up again, take some off, take some of the excess paint off. Come right in here. There two. And then with water, we start at the top where we began, and we soften those lines down. Here too. And all the way around. Sometimes I, I hit it like this, all the way around first, and then I feather it out. Because if I get too fancy up here, the paint could dry somewhere. And I don't want that to happen right now. I mean, if it does, it's a flower, you know. It's not a portrait. You have some, you have a lot of levity here. I'm gonna come right in a little tighter to the line. 
I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's doing well. It's a challenging time and exciting times. It's sort of a mix of emotion time. But I think this is, you can see here, I'm going to proceed. The next uh, video will show the balance of the flower. And then we'll let it dry for a little while and I'll come back again. Again, uh, we will see you shortly.